if we would have went in there at the same time and we had intentions on going at each other on the record, then you'd have heard a different record. It was never really what you consider beef. Beef to me is when you talk about somebody's family and they want to like punch the shit out your You know what I'm saying? Between me and him, it's like the original root of hip hop. It was just little stuff said on records. You know what I mean? Him and my manager had an agree a disagreement, which led to some stuff, but that was between two grown men, of course. If you want to watch this video completely uncensored and uncut, you can watch this version on my Patreon for just $2, patreon.com slash JohnAnthonyHD. Throughout the 80s and 90s, the East and West were dominating the hip-hop scene. In the mid-90s is where the South would begin to catch steam. In 1996, a rapper from Atlanta, Georgia who went under the rap name T.I.P. began selling mixtapes out of the trunk of his car alongside a local rapper named the Big Country King. Eventually, T.I.P. would be discovered by record executive K.P., who would sign him to his record label, Ghetto Vision Entertainment. T.I. would eventually sign with Arista Records' subsidiary label, LaFace Records, in 1999, where he would shorten his name from T.I.P. to T.I., out of respect for legendary rapper Q-Tip, who was on the same label as him. During this time, a man from Champaign, Illinois, named Christopher Bridges, was serving as an intern and a DJ at Atlanta's Hot 97.5, under the stage name Chris Lava Lava. During his time at Hot 97.5, Chris would meet music producer Timbaland. Chris would eventually adopt the rap name Ludacris, and on November 24th, 1998, Timbaland dropped his album Life from the Basement, to which Ludacris would feature on the track Fat Rabbit. That year, Ludacris, his manager Shaka Zulu, and his manager's brother Jeff Dixon would come together to create their independent record label called Disturbing the Peace Records under Universal. The next year, on August 17th, 1999, Ludacris would drop his debut studio album Incognegro under his newly formed label Disturbing the Peace. After that, Ludacris would gain some buzz and caught the attention of legendary rapper Scarface. Scarface listened to the album and made a deal to distribute Ludacris along with his Disturbing the Peace label through Def Jam, and in 1999, Def Jam's Southern Division called Def Jam South was officially founded. On October 17, 2000, Ludacris would make his debut with Def Jam when he dropped his second studio album back for the first time, which was a repackaged version of his debut album with some new songs added in. This album would reach number 4 on the US Billboard 200 and sold 133,000 copies within the first week. The next year, on October 9, 2001, T.I. would drop his debut studio album, I'm Serious, which was released under Arista. This album would go on to sell 163,000 copies within the first week, and actually received a lot of negative feedback from critics. T.I. was coming out, claiming to be the king of the South, but critics would say that this album failed to prove that. A month later, we would see the new king of the South emerge. On November 27, 2001, Ludacris dropped his third studio album, Word of Mouth. This would be Ludacris' breakout album, selling 281,000 copies within the first week and would feature smash hits like Move Bitch, Area Codes, and more. This album would be certified three times platinum just a year after it was released, so it was clear that Ludacris was not only the hottest artist in Atlanta, but one of the hottest rappers in the world at this point. In the year of 2002, T.I. didn't drop an album, and due to poor sales on his first album, he asked for a joint venture deal with Arista Records or to be released from his contract. Shortly after this, he would be dropped from his label, and in 2002, he would launch his own label called Grand Hustle with his business partner. T.I. needed to prove himself after his first album failure as the self-proclaimed King of the South. So he spent 2002 and a portion of 2003 recording his second studio album to prove the critics wrong. On August 19th, 2003, T.I. dropped his second studio album, Trap Music, which was released under his newly formed label, Grand Hustle. This album performed worse in the first week than his last album, only selling 110,000 copies within the first week. But this album was actually received well by critics and would go on to be a commercial success and featured hit songs like 24s and Rubber Band Man. This album would go on to become a classic and set the tone for the future of trap music. In 2003 is where the beat between T.I. and Ludacris would officially begin. T.I. appeared on BET's Rap City and on his freestyle, he dissed Ludacris and directly referenced Luda's label, Disturbing the Peace. These rappers really don't deserve to be, but keep running your teeth, I'ma come and disturb your peace. Uh, hey. It is unclear why T.I. threw shots at Luda on this freestyle, but I would speculate that T.I. was going at Ludacris to claim himself as the king of the south, as Ludacris was clearly the bigger artist at the time. 
Another speculation is that Ludacris was close friends with rapper Lil Flip, and he appeared on Ludacris' 2003 album Chicken and Beer. And at the time, T.I. and Lil Flip had beef with each other, so T.I. could have saw this as Luda siding with Lil Flip. But that's just speculation. Ludacris wouldn't respond to T.I. subliminals on Rap City, but in 2004 is where this beef would officially pop off. In 2004, DTP label member I-20 dropped his collaborative track, Fightin' in the Club, alongside other DTP artists Chingy, Boy, and Lil Fate. The music video would eventually release, and the whole theme of the track was obviously fighting in the club. In the music video, an actor wearing a yellow shirt that said Trap on it would be in one of the scenes, getting shoved into a pool table. T.I. actually thought that the shirt said Trap music on it, and the actor was supposed to be a play on him, as he also had a similar haircut to T.I. at the time as well. Not only did T.I. think that DTP was trying to diss him, but he also saw this as a huge marketing opportunity, as Ludacris, being one of the biggest artists at this point in time, beefing with Luda would definitely make T.I.'s name bigger. During that time, Southern rapper and G-Unit member Young Buck was gearing up to drop his debut studio album straight out of Cashville. Buck contacted T.I. to hop on his album on the track Stomp. T.I. would record his verse and officially took to wax to diss Ludacris in response to the alleged diss on I-20's music video. After Young Buck heard the diss, he contacted Ludacris and played the diss for him. After that, Ludacris himself would actually hop on the track to respond to T.I. on his verse. On the verse, Ludacris mocks T.I.'s song Rubber Band Man and directly name drops his old rap name T.I.P. Nobody's thinking about you, plus your beef ain't legit, so please stay off the T.I.P. of my dear. On July 29th, 2004, the G-Unit Radio Part 8, The Fifth Element mixtape dropped, which was the game's own edition of the G-Unit Radio mixtape series. On this mixtape appeared a remix of the track Stomp, to which the game actually had a verse on the track as well. This is when the public would officially be aware that Ludacris and T.I. just dissed each other on the same track and have beef with each other. After T.I. heard Luda's verse, he threatened to pull his verse off the official release of the track if Ludacris didn't change his verse, to which Luda refused to change the verse, so T.I. would pull his verse. A couple days later, Young Buck did an interview with MTV to speak on the T.I. and Ludacris situation on his song, when he said, in quotes, Yeah, it's crazy. A lot of people want to know how that record came about. They ask, how did you get two dudes talking about each other on the same track? When it started off, I had nothing to do with it. I still don't know the whole situation on why they had their differences. I respect both of them as artists. I like both of their music. I was hearing in the streets that T.I. and Luda been having problems with each other, and I know I just did a song with Luda's group about a week or two before. Me and Luda are cool. To be all the way honest, I'd known Luda before I knew T.I., so I couldn't just jump on this record and have them having differences with each other, and then have Luda be like, yo Buck, what's up? I even got at T.I., like yo, Luda heard this record, he want to jump on the record, just to make sure all the feelings and everything would stay the same way. And he was like, oh, I'm cool with it. Even throughout the song, you don't hear either one talking about killing each other. It's just more of a competitive thing. Damn, that's hip hop. So that's why I don't really understand the whole changing your verse part about the situation, but it is what it is. I ended up having to take T.I.'s verse off my album. On August 24, 2004, Young Buck's album Straight Outta Cashville dropped. On the stomp track appeared Ludacris and The Game, as T.I.'s verse was pulled from the track due to Ludacris refusing to change his verse. After this beef went public, Ludacris' manager Shaka called a meeting with T.I. where they seemingly squashed the beef, but this wouldn't exactly be the case. A couple years later, on March 28, 2006, T.I. dropped his album King, and on two of the tracks, he mentions Ludacris. On the track I'm Talking To You, it's unclear who exactly he was dissing throughout the song, but on the third verse, he mentioned how he and Luda actually sat down and squashed the beef. On the track, Told You So, on the hook, he once again name drops Ludacris. A couple months later, on September 26, 2006, Ludacris dropped his sixth studio album, Release Therapy. And on the track, War With God, he actually took T.I.'s approach from his song, I'm Talking To You where he disses someone without mentioning names, but instead, Ludacris was actually dissing T.I. throughout the entire track. I never claim to be nothing but who the fuck I am. Understand, nothing you did makes you better. T.I. wouldn't respond to this diss. 
A couple months later, in February 2007, at the Grammy Awards, T.I. and Ludacris were seen congratulating each other backstage, so it seemed as if this beef finally blew over. That summer, on June 23, 2007, at the MTV News Great Day in Atlanta event, Ludacris and T.I. were once again seen being cool with one another, but this beef was about to take another turn left. Just 24 hours after this event, on June 24, 2007, T.I. was attending a lunch hosted by Kevin Lyles of Warner Music Group at the Sunset Tower Hotel in West Hollywood, California. Three hours into the event, Ludacris and his manager Shaka Zulu arrive, and shortly after they arrived, T.I. and Ludacris' manager Shaka Zulu actually got into an altercation, resulting in T.I. allegedly punching Shaka in the face. Shaka's team would release a statement the next day, saying that it was an unprovoked attack from T.I. and forced Shaka to defend himself. Shaka would speak on the incident saying, in quotes, It's a shame that things like this continue to happen, especially with the backdrop of an event that was all about benevolence and charitable works. I'm thankful that all issues have been resolved. Two days later, on June 26, 2007, at the 2007 BET Awards, T.I. would win the award for Best Male Hip Hop Artist, and during his acceptance speech, he apologized to Ludacris and his camp for the altercation that took place just a couple of days ago, saying, in quotes, on behalf of my partner, T.I.P., I want to apologize for what happened the other day. There's a fine line between brilliance and insanity. It was very unfortunate and very inappropriate. But I don't want to divert any attention from the positiveness of the BET Awards. That's what's more important. About a week later, on July 3rd, 2007, T.I. dropped his fifth studio album, T.I. vs. T.I.P. And on the track, You Know What It Is, he says that he had the album of the year, whether he won a Grammy or not. Now this is perceived as a shot at Ludacris, who actually won a Grammy that year in 2007 for Best Rap Album with Release Therapy, so T.I. is basically saying that his album King was better despite not winning a Grammy. Ludacris would respond a month later on August 21st, 2007, when he dropped a remix to 50 Cent's song I Get Money, where he would send shots back at T.I. for saying that he had album of the year, and says that T.I. makes claims about being king of the south, while Luda makes hits. Cause Luda makes hits, other rappers make claims, still got the Grammy for the album of the year. At the time, 50 Cent also had issues with T.I., so it makes sense why Luda would diss T.I. over one of 50 Cent's songs. T.I. would get wind of this, so he clapped back on December 7th, 2007. Rapper Black Bill Gates dropped his project, King Shit. On the track, I'ma Do Me Remix, featuring T.I., Jeezy, and Rick Ross, on his verse, T.I. dissed Ludacris when he actually would retract his apology from the BET Awards and said that the apology was for BET, not DTP which is Luda's label, so this was a clear diss to Ludacris and his camp. After that, this beef would go quiet until the next year in 2008, a collab song with Ludacris and T.I. called Wish You Would was rumored to drop. In August 2008, T.I. would call in to DJ Self's Sirius radio station for an interview, and he spoke about the collab track with Ludacris saying, in quotes, Me and Dude never had no problems. It was always turmoil between our camp and his camp. Us as the bosses of our companies, everyone is going to follow our lead. We'd figure if it ain't no problem and we have no issues, no beef, then there's no reason we shouldn't be able to get together and make music. That was an executive decision that was made on both of our behalves. During this time, Ludacris was gearing up to drop his seventh studio album, Theater of Mind. On September 2nd, 2008, Ludacris dropped a single for his upcoming album called Wish You Would. And on this track, to everyone's surprise, it actually features T.I. Later that month, on September 26, 2008, Ludacris was being interviewed. And when he was asked about ending the beef with T.I., this is what he had to say. Question, I'm, I'm just curious, to what was the first conversation like when y'all decided to uh, mend your, yeah. your, your beef? I, I just wanted to always know, what, no, like, no, it's who good. said what? <laughs> Uh, did you believe him and then how did y'all convince yourself that the funny thing about that is we have been talking under the radar with which nobody would know for for a really long time you know we was just trying to figure out when would be the right opportunity to just kind of surprise people so with that being said it's you know we live in atlanta atlanta's small as hell like compared to new york city you know like there's a lot of beef in new york but like artists don't see each other and we got the same circle of friends, we go everywhere, you know what I'm saying? Like, you can't go anywhere without seeing eight people, our people. It was never really what you consider beef. Beef, to me, 
is when you talk about somebody's family and they want to like punch the shit out your ass. You know what I'm saying? Between me and him, it's like the original root of hip hop. It was just little stuff said on records. You know what I mean? Him and my manager had an agree a disagreement, which led to some stuff, but that was between two grown men, of course. And but you get shot up in the phone. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but even shot. even that, you know what I'm saying? It, that shit lasted all the 30 seconds. It really, it wasn't really what people made it out to be. But when I say that, I just mean that it was real more stuff on records and stuff said, and we would see each other all the time in Atlanta. You know what I mean? So it was really your, our lives, your entertainment. It was for everybody's entertainment. But to answer your question, we had numerous conversations and we were just trying to figure out when would be the best time to make it happen. And of course, everything that's going on in the music industry right now, we just felt like there's no better time to make it happen than now. On September 30th, 2008, T.I. dropped his sixth studio album, Paper Trail. And on the track, On Top of the World, Ludacris repays T.I. the favor and features on the track. Just a month later, on October 23rd, 2008, at the BET Hip Hop Awards, during T.I.'s performance, he would bring out Ludacris and they performed their song on top of the world together, so it was clear that this beef was over and squashed after several years. After that, nothing else happened, and these two would go on to perform together on a couple of different occasions. It's good to see these two put their differences aside and squash the beef. Who do you think had the upper hand in this beef? T.I. or Ludacris?